Well, it is erotic drama. Uh, first, the more Jack chat. It's just like coming home, it really is. It's just like if obviously you lived in a theater without any furniture. And <laughs> it's just like coming home if you live in a theater with and 300 people in your living room. Shall we start again? Good evening, thank you. Great to be back, it's been fantastic. Having nine weeks to myself, I managed to get around to all those little jobs, you know, I've been putting off for months. You know what it's like, you just put, well, I'll do that later, do that later. Just put it off for months, such as burying my uncle Dennis. <laughs> That's what I personally have been doing. I also decided I could learn a new skill. You know, you've got nine weeks off. Right, let's use the time. I thought about learning to speak Russian or taking a course in political economy in post-Franco Spain, but no! I'll show you what I've actually spent. 14 hours a day studying. Watch this. I've always wanted to... I've, so my time has not been wasted. The ball into the cup trick. <laughs> Hours a day. I, have you got do, sound? Do we have grand, Do we have a drum roll or something like that? But give it a bit of class here. There we go. Look at that! Hey! Hey! Woo! Woo! Hey! Hey! Oh, oh no! I'm wasting my life. do it my shot. No, I can't. <laughs> Isn't it? Look, people. Are... Right, let's really torture people now. People will be going, great, he's been away for nine weeks. I wonder what he's doing. And they don't realize I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this until the director starts screaming, stop doing this. OK, I'll come back to that later. Look, it's, that, it's just nine weeks. Nine weeks spent doing that. Listen, um, we've got a splendid lineup of guests for you. They're behind that door. Uh, they're over there. We've got top tough guy, scary, scary, boo boo. Star of Lock, Stock, and Two Smoking Barrels, Vinnie Jones, the gorgeous Vinnie Jones. <laughs> <laughs> Some young people there. <laughs> I hope you're not going to encourage any nonsense. Um, here's someone, maybe you wouldn't have heard of you were 14. Come on, ladies, we're going to fire some questions at Neil Sadaka. <laughs> Oh, God, he's got David Steele's old shirts. Uh, Neil Sadaka. <laughs> no one will get that reference. Not even David Steele will get that reference. Listen, when in doubt, when in doubt, when you've made a reference about David Steele that isn't going anywhere, do this. What? Right, uh, <laughs> maybe not. Listen, and shooting to start him with her new single, Republica! <laughs> And as per usual, I'm joined famous friends, ladies and gentlemen watching on the television. You can't be here at this magnificent party. People, we're in London, it's the main town. We've got famous people come to see me tonight. And who's, who's in the audience tonight from the world of show business? Anybody? Let's, let's train the cameras on the, who's here? Uh, Robin Williams. There he is. <laughs> Sorrow. Uh, anybody else? Who else is? Um, Dennis Bergkamp of Arsenal is here <laughs> to see Vinnie Jones. It's the closest Vinnie will get to Dennis all season. Um, anybody else in tonight? Excellent, Monica Lewinsky. There she is. <laughs> I wonder what happened to her. There she is. Monica. Where, where is she sitting? <laughs> Monica. Something you can do for me later. Now, um, Thanks very much to all tonight's 
celebrity guests. Thank you for coming. Now, my first guest is the legendary hard man of football and soon to be a legend in the cinema in the hit British film Lock, Stock and Two Smoking Barrels. Please welcome Vinnie Jones! <laughs> Is that, was that, actually, just seeing, hearing guys chant Vinny, was that, was there any ch particular chant that, that, that people, or song that people sang for you in your honour at the grounds? Well, at Wimbledon, I was always, uh, they always just chant out Psyker. But, uh, just I used to look behind me, I don't know who they were talking about. <laughs> so, and that was the referees. Couldn't have been you. <laughs> so that was it, just people going, Psycho, Psycho. No one ever sang, me and Vinny, Vinny Jones, no? <laughs> <laughs> I'd love to hear 8,000 <laughs> 8, Wimbledon fans. Like, Listen, you've turned your hand to acting. We're going to go back to football because we want to talk a bit about football, but acting is the thing at the moment. And let's have a look at a clip from uh, Lock, Stock, Two Smoking Barrels. Here we go. This is one of them high power jobs, isn't it? Oh. Some bad news for you, John. What the fuck? You mind your language in front of the boy. Jesus Christ! That includes blasphemy as well. Now tell me, John, how can you be concentrating on improving this lovely tan, and it is a lovely tan, by the way, when you've got more pressing priorities at hand? Tell Harry... I mean, Mr. Harry, I've been busy. I'm nearly there. Check his locker, son. I don't suppose there's any chance of you lifting this sunbed up, Chris, is there? Language like that again, son. You wish you hadn't. Sorry, Dad. Right, we'll put the rest of the stuff in there. You can go home in a plastic bag tonight, John. You owe what you owe. And by the time this tan's faded, you want to have paid. No, come on, me and Vinny Jones. Sing it. Sing it. I saw a fantastic movie. I saw it this afternoon, actually. You spend half your time, really, smashing people, slamming things. Do you learn that rather? Do they do that? <laughs> do, how did you get the job? Um, it was just a phone call out of blue, completely. Um, I'd done a small sketch for Ellenson on the telly. Oh, right, OK. And when the, uh, the writer, Guy Ritchie, he was writing it, he, said, uh, he saw me on, he says, um, he was explaining about Big Chris, the character, and everything. Sure. He says at the bottom of it, it's a little bit like, um, like Vinnie Jones, the footballer. And the natural step was to get you to do it. So yeah. you'd only done a little bit of acting before. Was it, was it yeah, all fairly new to, to you? Doing yeah. that? How did you get, I mean, I don't kind of see in that lovey world of actors. Was it a good laugh, didn't it? Yeah, well, I, I mean, people talk about the lovey world of it, but I, yeah. I haven't seen that side of it. I mean, mm. there was uh, probably 20 lads doing this film and we had, you know, a, a great crack. It was literally like being, at, uh, you know, at football in the change room with the boys. It was, you know, just a... And how did the lads at the football club Take it. They take the piss out of you for being an actor now, or did they? They didn't say they saw that scene. <laughs> <laughs> and you learn a bit of acting in football. I mean, you just because you're, you know, a lot. I mean, you you weren't a diver, but you, you have to protest the referee and all that. Is it a good grounding for acting? No, because I think I think with the acting you can take take after take, but uh, with the football it's just when you get over the white line, that's it. You know, it's it's game on and yeah. things happen. And there's a lot at stake now in football. Mm. That's what people don't understand, you know, when, you, you know, when you're when the wrong end of the table, it's hard yeah. to, uh, to be um, unpassionate about decisions that referees make. Sure. There's a lot of guys um, in football, Cantona did it, a lot of guys turning to acting, and Shearer doing ads and Lineker. Who do you think is the worst actor out of that mob? Well, do, you, do you rate Cantona as an actor? Have you seen his stuff yet? I haven't seen it, no. I've, I've yeah. seen a couple of little clips, but I think the worst would probably be... Uh, Lineker's adverts for the Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> and this wasn't a leading question, Vinny. I wasn't trying to make you say. No, I know you wasn't. I wasn't trying to get this spat going. But well, is it still going on, this, this Lineker versus Vinnie Jones fight? Is that still. There never was a fight because he never used jellyfish. to turn up. Oh, he never. <laughs> <laughs> you surprised me. <laughs> so, 
Yeah, it was, was that a jellyfish? You, I can't remember. What was the jellyfish? What, what started? What's, what's the, the latest? What's the latest? Where is the spat at now? Are you, you're not on speaking terms still. Well, I've, I've got no, nothing in common with the fella. Yeah. So, you know, it's, uh, it's just one of them. Yeah, I'm sure he's a very nice fella, but uh, as I say, he never turns up for the, for yeah. the first round. What's your opinion on uh, guys, pundits? Do they annoy you? They do because, you know, most of them weren't very good players themselves and they sit there and talk about players that are playing now. Yeah. You know, and it's all sort of uh, in my day sort of business, you know, which I will never, ever, you know, in 10 years' time get into that category. I, you know, I just, sure. I think that players, right. the game has got much faster now. Yeah. You know, a lot faster right. and chins have got a lot slimmer. Yeah. You know? <laughs> <laughs> well, it, it, you weren't very fast, player, were you? Did it get, is it, I'm not insulting you, you know. But not with my feet. I'm good with my hands, though. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Very quick with my hands. Came in, yeah. Feet came in last, but your hands were always. <laughs> yeah, there was always in there. Flying first. in there. Who's the scariest player you've played? Against? You had a reputation. Who, who? What name on any team sheet made you think, oh shit, I'm up against this well, guy? Not so Is much anyone? that, but there were. You know, you knew that you had to look after yourself with a yeah. couple of players. And Steve McMahon. I always had battles with Steve McMahon, and he was a he was a tough lad. You know, he knew how to tackle people. He knew how to tackle fair and. He knew how to tackle the other way if he wanted to, you know. So you, you knew that you had to be at your best to play against yeah. him. And I never played against Suness, but I saw some of his tackles. Yeah, time. yeah. What's your temper like these days? Is it, uh, do you think you have a short temper or are you just passionate? I'm very passionate and I think that all rolls into one. Yeah. You know, I mean, I, I, I like to win at all costs. Sure. And, you know... What, ri what riles you? What, what gets you going more than anything? being one nil down or four nil down, right, right. that contributes. <laughs> just that. <laughs> Getting the run around and not touching What, what about that, just that kind of stuff? Did that eventually get you going? I mean, just... <laughs> Come on, where's your breaking point? Well, last, Come on, yeah. last, last time I got, last time I got involved, last time I got involved oh, with yes. the presenter was uh, Barrymore and they pulled the show, so... Uh, did they, what happened? Well, tell us that story. I don't know that story. You what? Did you fought? It was, you it beat was Barrymore just, up? <laughs> no, it's just a bit of a crack, really. It's just a bit of a crack and they thought it was a bit too rough. Same too, as the Gladiators. Ah, right. The Gladiators was... Um, <laughs> oh, I, I didn't mean, know it was that. Setup. <laughs> it, was, it, it, it was more like, it was more like pantomime. That right, sure. Like, you're, we got Wolf and we got you, you know, but then what happened is a couple of them try to give it the big one. Right. And then, <laughs> and you know, and, and they did hurt me. They, yeah. they jumped on me and they all piled on me and like 20 stone fellas is, is not very nice. Awesome. So one of them had to have one up the kidneys. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hell broke loose. Come on, don't encourage it. But that wasn't Barrymore that got one up the kidneys. Hey, hey, just... <laughs> <laughs> was that a short fight? I want to go back to Barrymore. What was it? Was it kind of like... I really a tough guy? Is it... <laughs> yeah, I really... You know how mad he goes, didn't yeah, he? Yeah, yeah. He, he like... started uh, poking me in there and things Did like that. Did he stuff you know? like that? Doing that kind of stuff. <laughs> yeah, yeah that sort of thing. That yeah. kind of thing. Anyway, but moving you're right, on. you've got glasses. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I never hit a man with glasses. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. There wasn't many. Um, well, it, finally, predictions. Football, always full of predictions. When this show goes out uh, in a week's time, although it's going out now, obviously, but we did it a week ago, uh, will Glenn Hoddle still be England coach? I'd think so. Yeah. I'd think so, yeah. OK. Will Jones still be QPR coach? You never know. You never know. <laughs> just, you never know. <laughs> honestly, do you know what I mean? It's just... It's no, that we don't kind of know. Business. I mean, yeah. you know, there's... You know, all the time, when, it, when a club is struggling, you know, the press, the press do keep putting little wedges in and keep throwing things up. And that's the hardest part of day-to-day -day life. When you come yeah. out of the football club, people are saying, oh, are you manager now? Yeah, Has Ray yeah, gone upstairs? Yeah, Is yeah. Ian Dow with you now? And, yeah. you know, that's how it goes. We, you know, and that's when you're, when you're down, that's why Wimbledon was so good at it for so many years, yeah. was when you're down, you, you close the doors, you, you close ranks, and, you know, and you fight everybody off, yeah. and then you get your results, and then people leave you alone. Well, good luck, good luck with QPR and good luck with the acting career. I think it's going to go very well. It's been emotional. And yeah, it has. <laughs> if you've seen the movie, you know what that line's from. Thank you very much. Vinnie Jones for the time <laughs> Okay. We're going, to, uh, we're going to take a break uh, in a moment. In part two, we'll be talking to Neil Sadaka, a little more from Vinnie Jones, and we'll be listening to the new single from Republica. But before you put the kettle on, 
I want to show you something. During my nine weeks off, not only did I learn how to do that, <whistles> can't do it. I also went, right, thanks, buddy. I also went on safari and took my camcorder with me. I know it's very childish, but I couldn't resist it. I just, I, look, I saw two lions, you know, doing it. And I had a very special moment. Look at this. I'm going to be your Lion King, baby. Come here now. Whoa. Here we go. Who's the king of the jungle? Who's the king of the jungle? Who's the king of the jungle? And you are. Oh, I'm out. Now where those king-sized tissues? Okay, that's all for this night. See you in part two. Goodbye. <laughs>
with you songwriting, or was it, were you one of these guys you just sit down and it would be, you could do it in five minutes? At the beginning, it was easier because when you start out, you're fresh and new and things flow more easily. And then the more you do it, Jack, the more difficult it is because you try to top the last piece sure. and try to better it each time, try something new. Yeah. Then he's going to be up for that. He's going to top it and try something new each time. Sure. And you, you talk about the love songs. The new album's all love songs, isn't it? The new album's called Tales of Love, and it's half American standards. Right. The ones I grew up with, like I'll Be Seeing You and My Funny Valentine. Sure, sure. And uh, half of it are Neil Sedaka songs that I call the forgotten children, the neglected children. They've been in the trunk all these years, never recorded before. Right. Oh, hidden away from the Brill Building. Really old stuff from oh, the 50s? Oh, I would say I, not that old, no, but okay. we go back. We go back, you know, because uh, in a CD you can't fit more than a certain amount of songs, sure. and a lot of good songs are left by the wayside. Sure. You mentioned Stupid Cupid there. I, you, I, your, your beginnings were in the very innocent days of, you know, love songs were, yeah. you know, you holding hands. You know, even the Beatles, when they started, they could only go, I want to hold your hand, and now you can basically go, I'm so horny, and sit in my face. You can say anything, <laughs> basically, you want. I, I, do you find, have you adapted with the years? Do you find you can be more open in your lyrics, or do you still well, prefer that kind of The beginning yeah. songs, the first collection was very naive, as you say, uh, Teen, Teenage Lament, and uh, Stairway to Heavens, and Happy Birthday, Sweet Sixteen. Of course, now, you know, being an older person, you become more mature and you, yeah. you have different ideas about life and you have more experience. Well, do you experience. find yourself writing songs that are more, you know, when you start, you, you're probably in love for the first time yourself. So you're writing these kind of, hey, I'm in love. And then do you feel, I, I feel there's a shortage of songs that, you, that talk to like married couples, you know, things like, mm. you know, we have two children, you know, songs like we have sex twice a month. Mm. Yeah, you know, and then we have sex once a year, you know, and well, do you feel you want to try? I'm a little more serious than that. I like to have you, yeah. lyrics that are uh, serious and that apply to people that are universal. Perhaps that uh, people say, oh, that's my story. You know, breaking up yeah. is hard to do and yeah. that's happened to me. But it me. always seems, what, really behind that joke is the point that it's always either starting out or finishing songs. Somehow. Not in the middle. There's nothing just, oh, we're just cruising along and it's not bad and we've Oh, been I'm sure there have been many. Country songs usually. Country songs, uh, is yes. that what, uh, the country tradition is more. Yes, they get to the mitty gritty, yeah. I ain't married but the wife is, that yeah. kind of. My ring is uh, being uh, in, the, in the bar of rage and <laughs> yeah. the thing, yeah. Are you a Sadaka fan, Vinny? I've no idea of your musical tastes. Well, what are you? On, on, a, on a Sunday, it's amazing, like when in England you're 30, 32, 33. We have a few beers on a, on a Sunday afternoon. It's amazing how quickly we remember the lines Good. to your, so, yeah. to your <laughs> songs. Yeah. You get loose. <laughs> Loosen up and then uh, yeah. it all kind of does up and slings us out. That's the end of it. Really. Were, you, you, were you ever in charge of the Ghetto Blaster in the Wimbledon dressing yeah, room? Was we, that, oh, yeah. What kind of stuff did you put on there? Oh, Was very, it house and yeah, very like disco music, you know, and just pump get, up music, yeah. Get the guys really, pumped yeah. up. Do you follow um, current music, Neil? Do you, or do you stick with your Well, you know, I like, the world, I like the world music, the Andrea Bocelli and mm. the uh, Lorena McKennett, uh, people who uh, appeal to a wide range. Right. Yeah. I channel surf on the radio. I'll listen uh, yeah. to rock and roll, certainly. I like these, the songs that are intelligible. You can hear them. And sure. Melody songs. Uh, do, you, do you see anyone around today who do you think is going to have longevity? You know, uh, there are many. I, I really... I'm not a connoisseur, I, I'm not sure. an expert. I hear there's a Sadaka musical planned, is that? Yes, what's there's happening talk, there? there's, I can't mention details, I mean but Sadaka. there's a so, Sadaka. Musical. Sadaka musical planned. Toity, yeah. Toity Street and Toity Avenue. Toity, Toity. Yeah. Uh, there is talk about a uh, musical called The Neil Sadaka Story, yeah. which will open hopefully in the West End, which okay. has my music, right. and it's a story about my life. About it's you? based on my auto autobiography, oh, Laughter you, in the Rain. Who would you like to play you? I mean, you got... Oh, Tom Cruise, of course. <laughs> Tom Cruise. Yeah, absolutely. He's too small. Oh, Tom no. Cruise, you're a big fella. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> now, you once said this. C confirm or deny. Look, look at this. I was doing my research on you. Look at this quote here. I learned how to work an audience, relax, and never sweat on stage. I do that by self-hypnosis and being in control. Is that the case? Yes. Can you actually... Absolutely. Before How did you do it? I swe I'm sweating. I don't no, know how, how did you do does it, but before I go out in front of an audience, uh -huh. I have to be alone in the dressing room, get myself in a mood. Yeah. <laughs> Neil, I do 
apologize. You're dealing with a British audience. They're yeah, very rowdy. And if, <laughs> rowdy hooligans. I mean, they've been watching endless carry-on movies, and that's all you have to say. What did I say? I wanted you to be did, alone no, in a dressing room. No, and to them... Now, this is serious. Yeah, yeah. In order to be a good performer, you have to have a lot of self-confidence. Never sweat in front of an audience. Never show them that you're trying too hard. And never strain. Be yeah. relaxed, and if you're relaxed, then the audience is relaxed, and they can say, hey, he's having a good time, he's enjoying himself. Plus, there's a self-hypnosis where you say, uh, we just take Viagra over here now for that. <laughs> <laughs> you must sweat. <laughs> you, 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 no stranger to sweat, Vinny, I guess, you know. You're really. running around, all that. Kind of, do you lose a stone a match? What, what's the, you know, have you ever weighed yourself you before and after? Yeah, I think you lose, in a game, you lose like five or six pounds. All right. Yeah. yeah Especially well, you, all the bookings I get, the yeah. fines I get, I lose, <laughs> I lose a lot more than five or six pounds. <laughs> yeah, but not in weight, because you didn't run around much. So what, what did you lose? Well, I did. I used to chase people all over the place. And never going, <laughs> Come back, <laughs> Michael on. So you remind me of the actor who was in um, The Boxer. Um, Remind me, help me. Wh which many boxing films? Daniel Day Lewis? Daniel Day Lewis. Robert De Niro? A young Daniel Day Lewis. Absolutely. Well, high, high praise. And it is high praise. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I knew a girl called Lewis once. Was about <laughs> it. <laughs> well, it's all, it's all tying up. It's all tying up. Listen, we, 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 the sweat thing entertained us so much that we decided to see if we could market sweat on the street. We, decided, we collected sweat from all the crew here and took it out and, and basically, without telling people, got them to drink it. Have a look at this. Oh. Which one did you prefer, sir? Uh, I preferred B. Okay, I'll show you which one. You've rejected A. English tap water. And this is the new one on the market soon. <laughs> and that is human sweat. Uh huh. Distilled human sweat. Distilled human sweat. Would you drink that? Oh, certainly. <laughs> this was the one you preferred. <laughs> you meant sweat. Ah, come on. How can you? <laughs> but you didn't enjoy that one. No, I didn't. Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't hear that one. Fellas, chuck it. And now, uh, chuck it. Listen, I'm sorry, we're out of time. Thank you very much. Neil Stark and Vinnie Jones. Vinnie and Stark. Now, anyone who's ever had a bit of a fumble in the backseat of a bus will be able to relate to this. It's Republica with her new single, From the Rush Hour with Love.